going once, going twice, none. none. All right. Um, any question or traffic control order 266 for Coventry, Coventry Drive for our newer commissioners is the annual garage sale that that neighborhood has had, I believe for decades, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it's in a, just a traffic control, control order to put signage out there for them for uh, uh, the residents uh, safety there. And then resolution 21-598 uh, for the establishment of an industrial district for speed rack products uh, group. LTD. So do we have anybody here from Speed Rack or are we, are they, oh, Eric's online. I see that right there. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Jason, we'll go ahead uh, here in a second, unmute him. Uh, Mr. Quist, uh, can you hear us? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, we'll turn this over to you. If you could give us some background on the project of your company, a um, um, little bit of the history and uh, uh, bring us into the plans to uh, uh, relocate up here into Walker. So uh, I'll turn it over to you. So um, those that aren't familiar, I'm, I'm Eric Quist. I'm the president of Speed Rack. Um, I've been with the company about 20 years. Uh, they um, been in business since the 70s. We build very large um, storage type racking. Uh, I Amazon being one of our largest customers. It's the type of racking you might see in um, Home Depot, um, but but more more in the pallet racking. Um, we we had we had plants down in Alabama and and West Virginia at one point, and they brought me on board to close those plants and reopen a plant in Quincy, Michigan, where we currently employ about 225 um, employees in Quincy, and then. We opened up a satellite facility um, about two or three years ago, and we employ 25 people over there. Um, Quincy went in in 2002, um, so we basically uh, roll form from um, hot rolled coils. Uh, we roll form into a shape. Uh, we weld uprights and beams for pallet racking and system modules, mostly again for Amazon. Medline, Ford Motor Company, GM. Um, so we weld them, and some of that's robotic. Some of it is is manual. Then we um, powder coat paint them, and we ship them across the country, um, really North America. So you know our proposal. You know the biggest we we had two problems when we we started to look in Northeast Indiana. Um, did some studies of labor there well we we kind of did a radius around quincy um and we did a radius around there about 200 miles and we came up early with two locations and that was northeast indiana um fort wayne and then also in the grand rapids area so we we right now we're leaning towards the grand rapids area um our our corporate headquarters are in sparta where our engineers i'm i'm up there most of our executives are up there um we have uh, project management. The owner, Ron Ducharme, um, has his office there as well. And what we would do with the, with the property there in Walker is open up 275,000 square foot facility. Um, we're gonna try to automate as much as we can. Um, we, we already have like, there's a long lead time items like mills and paint lines that we already have on order, but they could go anywhere. They could go in a facility in Indiana, wherever we wanted to put them. But we have already ordered that equipment, knowing we have to put them into a building somewhere. Um, Grand Rapids is attractive to us. Walker is very attractive. Um, it's that piece of property next to uh, GR Press off of 96, 35 acres there with the Vista Group. Um, and it's gonna be about 120 employees. Um, our average wage is going to be in the $25 range. We work with the union out of Wayland, uh, the millwrights. They're going to help us recruit and train people. Our plants in Litchfield and Quincy are 100% union. Currently, we have a contract, I think, through 2024, 2025. Um, we have an excellent relationship with our union, and they want to come on board and help us recruit, train, and uh, get people into this new facility. Is there any questions?
there, Aaron? Is there any additional uh, color you could share? Yeah, I, I don't think we've actually seen this at the Planning Commission yet. Has it been discussion on that general area from a building perspective? Right. Uh, generally speaking, I think that we're we're pretty excited about the idea of getting you know promoting more of the industrial development uh, in that in that part of the city. Um, I think it matches with the intent of what we're trying to achieve there. And um, I suppose if you need any more color, I can try to answer questions. But that's that's all I have. Generally speaking. Any questions for Mr. Bush? Mr. Yeah. No. That's just I, just your conversation with Commissioner Gilbert raises some questions for me is this I mean I'm, can you explain the process here like it sounds like they need to go to the Planning Commission at some point or what what are we, where are we in the process and what are, exactly are we setting up for so this is industrial tax unit okay so your hand go up whichever one of you yeah uh, right now the first the request before you tonight is to establish a district for the 198 tax abatement it's the first step prior to a certificate when a project actually receives its site plan approval and then is ready to construct, they will be back before you for the actual certificate. So this just basically sets up the district on the piece of property that they're interested in, uh, has to go through this process. And then, as I said, once they get through the site plan approval process, uh, they will be back before you again on the actual certificate when they have all the everything uh, finalized as far as the amount of investment and type of investment into the facility and building. Step one of two. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any other questions for Mr. Quist? Okay, do we, um, any feedback challenges with our um, decision tonight to uh, uh, start with step one of this? Okay. Not necessarily about the decision tonight, but are you concerned at all about um, getting the talent that you need or how do you plan on building your your workforce that you need is this people that you're transferring well, again, um, no so um again our plan is to, is to um hire from the community um so again we're, we're working with um, we work with the union on um, the mill rights out of whalen um they have a uh, quite i don't know if you've seen it but a very large um training center down there and they have a number of people that um, in the office that are gonna help us recruit, um, whether that be from, from career centers or, or, um, or Michigan Works, or you know, I, I'm not really sure their whole process, but that would be one of them. We, we, feel, we feel as though that our wage is um, gonna be very competitive. Uh, you know, that was, again, it's, it's, either, it's either Fort Wayne or Grand Rapids where we feel that at, at $25 an hour on average, um, we're going to be able to get that number of employees. Um, and this, um, and, and then the, the second part of that is, is you know, it's, it's the hourly. We, we will transfer a few for training purposes from Quincy, um, whether that's long-term or short-term, um, we don't know yet. But we are going to transfer, I think, about 40 employees out of Sparta, um, salaried employees and executives out of Sparta into new offices that we plan to build there in, uh, in a new facility. Thank you. All right, any other questions, commissioners? Oh, John, I see, see you right there. Uh, Mr. Bile. Good evening, everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. I, I joined a few minutes ago, and I, Eric, I saw that you were uh, you were talking. I just want to introduce myself, John Bile, Warder Norcross, and you've obviously already met Eric. And um, um, you know, we're we're um, we're prepared. If if you need any presentation or short discussion uh, during the public hearing or at the beginning of the public hearing, uh, that that's that's fine. But we're, uh, we're grateful for the opportunity to uh, at least have this considered, the Industrial Development District. And uh, I think you know a little bit about the company after hearing Eric, but uh, Speedrack, I can tell you, is a terrific company. Their operation is great, and uh, they, they've, got, uh, they've got obviously high-paying jobs, and this is a great opportunity. It's a large investment in the city, and we look forward to the opportunity. All right. 
Go to Mr. Chris, you did mention the, uh, the relationship with the unions has been excellent with the mill rates. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, their, their main office is in Warren, Michigan. Yep, and they've got that nice new building right off the Wayland exit down there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions or dialogue for either Mr. Quist or Mr. Bile? And I'll... Yeah, I, I just would like to say, I think it's um, fantastic that you'll be working with the union um, in hiring. It's, it's nice to see that kind of manufacturing and labor coming back a little bit in this area. So, you know, those good stable jobs with benefits that will help people, you know, be able to thrive in our community. So I commend your work in that area. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna do a quick little straw poll for our commissioners in attendance, because then if um, we have a um, indication here, favorable or otherwise, uh, we can allow Mr. Quist, Mr. Bell to, uh, um, Daryl, should we keep them on for the seven o'clock for the uh, public hearing? Yeah, I would Probably. recommend that at least through okay. the public hearing. And I think if we see no, hear no comments on that, then we can, you know, they wouldn't have to stay through the rest of the public uh, okay. comments that we may have. And, you know, because there's two action items, the public hearing and then the adoption of the resolution itself. And we're early on uh, right after the seven o'clock hour, gentlemen. So if you can hang tight with us, commissioners, thumbs up, thumbs down. Are we coming this way? Okay, I think we'll be in a good spot at seven o'clock. So if uh, um, you wanna go off camera, mute, what have you, um, seven o'clock, probably about uh, three, four minutes in, um, right in that time frame, uh, we'll go to the uh, uh, public hearing for the uh, Industrial Development District for you. We appreciate it, thank you. Yep. All right, <laughs> um, next on the list, um, Madam Clerk, on the resolution 21-599 to revise the clerk office fee schedule. So this resolution, as we talked about two weeks ago, is basically to um, now that the second reading is on your agenda for tonight for chapter 22, we're adding the mobile food vending. So we revised the clerk resolution for fee schedule to add the mobile food vending, which will be $25 per year, just a yearly fee. Which is in line with our other. Which is exactly fees. what we're doing for business yep. licensing. So yes, we're not. Um, not charging an substantial amount, or just for the clerical paperwork purposes, a minimal amount. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Any questions, commissioners? All right. Um, we have covered our um, consent agenda there. So I'm going to jump to um, comments. Um, I'll start city managers down to the left. Nothing for me tonight. Okay. I'll make that unanimous. I'm, I'm good. We're just dealing with a lot of personnel changes in the round city hall. So keeping trying to keep up on all that. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep working to my left here. Commissioner Rapp. Nothing. All right. Commissioner. You guys all just want to break before <laughs> seven o'clock. Commissioner be, Glanville. I'll be brief. Today. Oh, you're good. No, um, I had, was at the Waste Energy Committee meeting, the county um, meeting a couple weeks ago last week, maybe I don't know, time has no, you know, kind of lost in, in the days these days. But at any rate, we met recently, um, just looking at the budget, you know, future expenses, what needs to be done there. I think you're all aware, maybe for some of our newer commissioners, um, the waste to energy plant is the incinerator down, down um, by Market Avenue and um, is has done the community a great service over the years um, and is in need of some repairs and upgrades. Um, so we're constantly having that conversation. It's tied into the sustainable business park. Um, you know, there's a lot of conversation coming up. I think mayor you're involved in, if I'm not mistaken in the committee that's talking a little bit about some of that stuff. Um, so just we're in our regular annual budget cycle um, and we're gonna have some talks coming up about, you know, just what that looks like and it, it should be fine. Everything's kind of in place, but one thing that I want to just bring up um, as kind of a public service announcement is um, just really the focus on recycling. That with plastics and cardboard going into regular trash, they end up in the incinerator, um, which causes the incinerator to overwork. It gets um, very heated. It's called high heat value. Um, and those are high heat value items that put a lot of strain on the incinerator. And it might not seem like much as an individual to separate your cardboard and your plastic. 
But if everybody in the six cities is doing that, you know, it really does help alleviate um, wear and tear on that facility. And it's one of the um, facilities, last facilities in the nation. It runs very clean. We do a lot of work um, at the state level with um, drug recovery and things like that. So anyway, um, please think about, and I would encourage you to uh, separate your plastics and your cardboard. Rinse them out a little bit. If it's a you know greasy pizza box, just take the top off and recycle that and throw the rest away so you don't contaminate it. Um, all that good stuff. So simple moves that we can make to help maintain uh, that service for the community. That's all I got. All right, thank you. Commissioner Gilbert? Yeah, so um, first planning commission met uh, twice in the past two weeks. Uh, the first of course is the Waterford Village project. We'll hear more about that today. Um, but the second planning commission meeting was on the uh, Benji salon, which is a new salon that they're planning to put up in the Standale area over on Cummings next to DeHops. Um, so look out for that. We did grant site plan approval there. Um, also, we had to just make some adjustments to the uh, Amazon plan for some wayfinding signs just to help direct people through the site so that the right traffic goes to the right places and I think that's something that's <laughs> always uh, tough to get right, but once once you find that right mix of signs, that's that's important to have that uh, there in place. A um, couple other things, I did just want to mention that the uh, legislative budgets did get uh, advanced to the next step in the process. Um, for everyone's benefit, there was an increase in statutory revenue sharing um, in each of the budgets. Uh, the governor approved. 2% in one time, um, which I'm sure we've all heard at this point. Um, but the Senate approved a 2% increase to uh, statutory revenue sharing that is ongoing. Um, and the House approved, I believe, a one time increase of 1%. So um, through the process, they'll try to narrow down to somewhere in between these three options. But those are the, uh, I guess, tent poles that the statutory revenue sharing will, will be filtered through. Um, and then the only other thing, um, the Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce, along with a group of state legislators did announce the uh, housing package that I had mentioned uh, prior. Uh, they have a website now, it's housingmichigan.weebly.com. Um, and everyone can go take a look at that if you're so inclined. And it will have some information on some of the different pieces of legislation that they're, they're promoting and trying to advance to help uh, give communities like ours options to uh, create and incentivize affordable housing in our communities. And that is it for me. All right, thank you. Madam Clerk? Oh, thank you. Oh, boy. I don't think I can, well, I can talk for 12 minutes, but I'll be brief. Um, I actually only have two items. One is uh, thank you to the, uh, actually, let me start with the, the downer piece, just because it was a very tough decision, but one not made um and talking with um our managers and with it last week and um a lot of consultation from the county health department the unfortunate aspect of having to uh, postpone the memorial day parade this year is just with well overall numbers um this week are starting on the decline it's still um the health department gave us some great advice or um uh, guidance on the types of cases and what was taking place in, in the hospitals and while there's this general feeling that we're going to be in a much much better spot where um, we might be able to do it in um, you know late May on Memorial Day. Uh, there's also the realization that right now when we have to book everything and plan for all the logistics, we're just not there yet. And uh, um, I, I don't look at necessarily the the, the trends um, as we're talking myself. I don't look at the trends all the time and make the decision based on that with other municipalities but it's hard to ignore the fact that everybody else is canceling. And uh, um, I think there'll be some, uh, most of the cities are already doing the July 4th parades. Um, Granville, I know is uh, discussing theirs tonight and trying to find a way to do it. But uh, um, what I was hearing, it was just not a feasible option. So um, that's the, the downer news. Um, we'll do what we uh, can to get that back on track. Um, and then last thing I have is a thank you to the personnel committee and then our chief's advisory committee of the two police chiefs and the sheriff as we're going through our process of hiring the new police chief. Um, personnel met this morning, um, just to define the timeline, we'll uh, start an interview process into next week. Um, I wanna be from the confidentiality of the applicants. Um, 
be very brief and vague on this tonight and not to the specifics of the individuals, but uh, um, we did have six applicants um, for this. Um, uh, two do not meet the minimum requirements. Um, so we have a, our candidate pool from there of what we're looking at. So uh, personnel, we'll start with that next week. And then as we're able to from the confidentiality, then um, have that discussion with um, the rest of the commission of um, uh, where that is going. So that pretty much explains it. All right, um, outside of that, um, it is 651. We can, Gerald Frank, anything else we need to cover? Okay. We'll take, uh, let's take a quick, uh, maybe eight, uh, seven, eight minute uh, break. Somebody needs some water or anything else. Um, if you would mute your mics, we'll go off uh, here for a few minutes.
<laughs> there we go. All right, it is uh, seven o'clock. We'll call our uh, regular city commission meeting to order. I'd like to ask Commissioner Gilbert to please deliver the invocation and start us in the Pledge of Allegiance when we're done. Thank you, Mayor. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for being here with us today as we gather to do good work on behalf of the people of the city of Walker. We ask that you offer us the guidance and wisdom to do what is best for those who we are here to serve and to have the vision to work toward a brighter future for our city. And Lord, we pray that you protect those who work so hard to protect us. And we thank you for all that you do to allow us to be here and serve our community. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Commissioner. If you'd invite our audience to please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If I could ask the clerk to please uh, call the roll. Mayor Carey. Present. Commissioner Rapp. Present. Commissioner Gilbert. Present. Commissioner Glenville. Present. Commissioner Groters. Present. And Commissioner Chase. Present. Thank you. And we have an absence of Commissioner Dishing. I'll entertain a motion for, uh, to approve Commissioner Dishing. I'll make Wright. the motion. Thank you. I'll support. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, Mr. Just this Shane is excused. Thank you. Um, next on the list is the approval of minutes from the April 12th, 2021 meeting. Before I asked for that motion, I did catch one thing. I didn't catch it till late this afternoon was Liz Knapp in the committee, the whole meeting from KDL. Yeah. Yeah. There was, okay. If we could somehow just add her name, just for future reference up at the top, the impact report. Um, I didn't see Liz's name up on there. So, um, and I uh, K N A P P, and she is the Craig's Region Two Director, and I think she's the Region One Director for KDL, Regional Director. Awesome, thank you. Um, now, with that change, is there any questions on the minutes? Otherwise, entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Groders. Support. I'll second it. Commissioner Rapp. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Approval. Minutes are approved from April 12th. Um, next on the list is the public hearing. Um, this is for the Industrial Development District for Speed Rack Products Group that we talked about in the 630 Committee to Whole meeting. We are now holding a public hearing for an establishment of an Industrial Development District for Speed Rack Products Group, LTD, located at 3060 South Industrial Drive. Anyone wishing to speak on these subjects should raise their hand or come forward and be recognized to speak. Is there any public comment on this matter? Is there any public comment on this on the Zoom meeting? If you would, please raise your hand. I'll go one more time there while Jason's looking through there. Is there any public comment on this matter from those on the Zoom meeting? If there is, uh, please unmute yourself, raise your hand. If you're on a phone, you have to do star nine to raise your hand. Is that you, Jason? Okay. Nobody? Okay. All right, Our uh, after hearing no public comments, the public hearing is now closed. Um, public comment on agenda items. Um, read a quick note. So I know there's, we have some on the waiting room on the call. Um, we have um, at least one in attendance here. Um, as we open our public comment on the agenda items, I'd like to welcome everyone joining us here in person as well as through the Zoom call. In order to ensure everyone has a chance to speak with large groups, we usually try and limit the public comment to three minutes. However, this evening, we're going to allow some flexibility with that as the rezoning and proposed development being considered is significant enough and there are a lot of voices that need to be heard. So our ask from the city commission is that while you won't be a hard stop at three minutes, we would ask that you share your comments and then allow the next person to do the same. If you can work with us there, I think we can hear everyone and not have you feel rushed. Also, if someone before you has already stated the same comments that you plan on sharing, please reference that along with your name and address and we can move um, effectively along there. Thank you. And now we can commence with the public comment on agenda items portion of our meeting. 
Um, I'm going to start with the in-person group. Uh, so if there's anybody in person that would like to discuss any items, public comment on the agenda items for this evening, uh, please do so. Um, would first ask that you start with your name and address for the record, and uh, we'll get going here. We'll go to the Zoom uh, attendees next. So anybody in person that has public comment on agenda items, please, uh, you're welcome to step forward. Mr. Sauls, please come right up to the uh, microphone. And if you would press that button in the middle, you'll see your red light come on there. Nice and easy, thank you. Uh, if you would for, start us off, name and address for the record, and then uh, the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Frank Segalis. I'm from 695 Lincoln Lawns Drive, Northwest in Walker, Michigan. Um, this evening, I wanted to talk about uh, a little bit about what went on at the planning meeting. Um, but first, I want to um, just find out a little bit more about the uh, progress and how this proposal is going to go. Um, the new owner of the property um, is assuming that it's going to go ahead and be rezoned. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about the golf course portion of it. I'm not talking about the commercial, which is light right around the, the Lake Michigan Drive area from Lincoln Lawns down to the city limits. Um, what I'm concerned about and our neighbors are concerned about is the additional traffic and also the drainage issue that we have. Um, the drainage issue has been addressed in the past, uh, not with a complete type of uh, uh, settlement uh, to have the water taken care of in the area. Um, there have been some fixes, um, some band-aids put on, uh, but there is a big concern for drainage through that area. Um, the other thing I said was about the traffic. Um, there's going to be uh, quite a bit more traffic from that type of development going in. Um, not just the single family homes, but I'm very concerned about the apartments and um, what all that entails. Um, I know Steve was at the meeting and um, he's represented here on the commission and he made notes um, to the city residents um, from his perspective. And there are some concerns how it goes against the master plan um, from a low density neighborhood as ours, having a higher density type uh, apartment type complex be put in across the street from us. Um, there's quite a few different apartment complexes right within our area. And um, we really don't see where this type of development in our neighborhood is going to benefit Walker as a whole. Um, like I said, the drainage number one, the traffic number two, especially in the Lincoln Lawns area. Um, I appreciate the time this evening and I look forward to the next meeting for the planning, which will talk about the PASP, the preliminary plan and all that. Um, any questions for me? I don't know if, no. I don't think so. I think we're good here. We're gonna go through the public comment. Okay, um, thank you very much. You bet, thank you, Mr. Scalis. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to speak? All right. Mr. Rotman, you'll guide us through here. So we're gonna transition over to the, uh, the Zoom attendees and um, I'm gonna open this up if you would raise your hand. 
um, or uh, um, Jason, I believe you're watching the screen there. So um, if you can release them one at a time uh, for those coming on, if you would please state your name and phone number for our public record here. Uh, if you have any public comment on the agenda items that we have for this evening, um, we'll go over to uh, uh, the Zoom attendees now. Mr. Mayor, that's address, not phone number. Address, not for. phone number. Thank you. Name and address. Thank you. Good, Once good again, call if out. you're on a phone, uh, star nine will raise your hand. And if you're just in the Zoom meeting, uh, lower part of your screen, you'll see a hand that you can click to raise. Okay, Vito, you can talk. Can you hear me? We can, thank you. The floor is yours, Mr. Dolce. How you doing? Vito Dolce, uh, 4057 Tall Timber. Um, my comment is really on the, uh, the Lincoln Lawns uh, development there. And I am, you know, I'm all for development. Uh, you know, the city's either growing or dying. So the development aspect of things, you know, I've been able to be into the plan. Uh, but I, I really would like to see whether it's just here or a different location. Uh, hey, Mr. Dolce. Yes. I'm going to bring you back in there. We lost you right after, I think, this your name and then your address. Um, so if you could uh, do a little reset for us and we'll uh, we'll start over. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Uh, so, again, this is Vito Dolce. So I am, uh, you know, I'm all for developing. I, I feel like you're either developing or you're growing or you're dying at this point uh, as far as the city. So um, I'm all for developing, but I really would think where Walker is lacking um, is more of a downtown live work type feel where you can park, walk around, go to different restaurants, go to different breweries and just kind of hang out downtown. Uh, you know, something that's very walkable, uh, slow traffic, very uh, community friendly. And whether that's this location or a different location, I, I believe, you know, density aside, uh, the more dense it is, the more walkable, uh, walkable it is. Uh, you know, that more brings the community together um, and, and makes it more of a destination than just an increased traffic. You know, I think the last thing that anyone wants on Lake Michigan Drive is, you know, a, another trafficy type Alpine, uh, more or less a destination would be more uh, community friendly is where I think uh, at least a lot of concerns and uh, voices that I've received regarding this development. All right, thank you, Mr. Dulce, appreciate it. Um, and I believe for those out in the Zoom audience, if you hit star nine, um, it will raise your hand and we can unmute you on this end and uh, um, allow you to jump in for public comment on the agenda items this evening. Again, that would be star nine um, or raise your hand in front of your camera uh, for, uh, uh, to make sure we get you in. Nobody else. All right, I'm gonna go one more time here. Um, out in our Zoom audience here for the people on the meeting, um, if there is, um, I do see one coming up there. All right, uh, Mr. Rossell, I believe, or is it Roselle or Rossell? Good evening, uh, this is Andrew Rossell with AR Engineering. And I'm here on behalf of Great Lakes Capital we have an agenda item for the rezone at 3174 4 mile. And I just, I don't wanna give a presentation or um, any of that. I just wanna let you know that I am on the phone and could answer any questions that any of the council members might have. So thank you. And I'm gonna mute myself. And if you have anything, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, thank you. Jason, anybody else out there? Um, again, I'll go one more time for the Zoom attendees out there. Um, star nine will allow you to, will raise your hand. Uh, we can see on this end or do it in front of your camera um, if you're uh, uh, showing live uh, video there. And we wanna make sure your voice is heard. So again, this is for public comment 
on uh, the agenda items for this evening. If you have any public comment and would like to share those, uh, please raise your hand by either hitting star nine, um, which will raise your hand electronically or raise your hand in front of the camera and uh, we'll get you in here. So we'll give this about a five second window here. All right, um, I believe we've satisfied our process for the public comment on agenda items. So we're gonna move forward um, at this point. Um, next on our list is the consent agenda for this evening. Um, we have two items on here. First is an expenditure in the amount of $411,010.86. Um, the second is a traffic control order for two, traffic control order 266 for Coventry Drive and it's the annual garage sale and temporary signage allowing them in there. Is there any questions or dialogue on here uh, for, um, for the items otherwise entertain a motion for approval and support. I'll make the motion. Mr. Support. Gilbert, Commissioner Glanville, thank you. Um, any other discussion on these? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, consent agenda is passed, thank you. Next on the list is resolution 21-598. Uh, this is a resolution for the establishment of an industrial district for Speed Rack Products Group. Um, we heard a presentation at our 630 committee, the whole meeting. Um, we've also held a, a public hearing on the industrial development district for this with no, um, nobody jumping in on this. Um, so we're going to move forward on this. Is there any other questions? Um, I believe um, are our attendees still out in the audience there, Jason? No, okay, well, they're gone, right? So um, we went through this already in the uh, uh, 6.30 meeting. Uh, are there any other questions or dialogue on this, commissioners? All right, um, otherwise seeing none, I'll entertain a motion for approval and support on resolution 21-598 for the establishment of an industrial district for Speed Rack Products Group, LTD. I'll make the motion. I'll support. Gilbert, support from Chase, thank you. Any Rap. other discussion? What was it? You went first. <laughs> All right, sorry. It's the mask. <laughs> All right. Um, any other discussion on 21 598? All right, good. I uh, see none. Uh, we have a motion for Commissioner Rapp. Support from Commissioner Gilbert. No, Chase. No, Chase. Gilbert Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have this for the record. Rapp, then Chase. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, 21, resolution 21-598 is passed. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is resolution 21-599, resolution to revise the clerk office fee schedule. We covered this at the 630 committee, the whole meeting that's basically to accommodate our food truck, um, mobile food vendor licenses. Um, any other dialogue on this from the commission on the RIS, I'll obtain a motion for approval and support. Make a motion. Mr. Gilbert, thank you. Support. Commissioner Groders, thank you. I got it right that time. Um, any other discussion from the commission? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Resolution 21-599 is passed. Um, we'll go through these. We covered the second readings. Um, go through these a um, little rapid fire here. So please jump in for, with support and approval. Uh, first one is ordinance 21-660, second reading of chapter 22 amendments. Um, do I have a motion for support or approval and support? Make motion. Support. Gilbert and Commissioner Glanville, thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ordinance 21-660 has passed. Ordinance, next on the list, Ordinance 21-661, second reading of Chapter 94, Article 18 Amendments. Um, this is for the food truck. Uh, Tricia covered this at the last meeting, um, actually 661 and 662, but we'll take them one at a time. Um, any discussion on these? Otherwise, entertain a motion for approval and support. I'll make a motion. Support. Chase and Groders, thank you. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ordinance 21-661 has passed. Next on the list is Ordinance 21-662. It's a second reading of Chapter 94, Article 1 Amendments, um, also covering the food truck items. Is there any discussion or questions? Good, we'll move forward. Uh, do I have a motion for support and approval or approval and support? I'll make a motion. Chase and Rapp, thank you. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ordinance 21-662 is passed. 
Next on the list is Ordinance 21-515, second reading of the 1470 Four Mile Road rezoning. This is for the English Hills uh, proposed development. Um, any other discussion on this? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion for approval and support. Make motion. Gilbert. Support. Groders, thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ordinance 21-515 is passed. Um, next on the list, and we do have Mr. Russell um, from AR Engineering on the phone, um, if needed for any questions. Um, this is the second reading for Ordinance 21-516 for the second reading of 3174 Four Mile Road rezoning at the Great Lakes Capital um, uh, proposed development. Is there any questions on this? Discussion, otherwise I'll entertain a motion for approval and support. I'll make a motion. Support. Chase Glanville, thank you. Um, any other dialogue, questions? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, ordinance 21-516 is passed for the second reading of the 3174 Four Mile Road rezoning. Mr. Rizal, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you all as well. Have a good evening. Thank you. And then probably what um, I know has a lot of attention this evening is ordinance 21-517. This is the first reading to amend the zoning ordinance and map to rezone property at 3483 and 3485 Lake Michigan Drive, Northwest of section 20 within the city of Walker. I believe we have a uh, presentation uh, queued up. Um, I'll we'll, um, ask the developer to please come up to the uh, mic up front um press our red our button there your red light should be on jason awesome thank you uh, mr cavanaugh the floor is yours mayor commissioners thank you very much for having us here tonight and it's uh, been a long process and some time to get here um due to the last year but uh we're here and and we're enthusiastic about this project and looking for your support to rezone the property uh not you go to the next slide there uh, we already did that one. That's basically, it's Stony Companies is my company. We're based out of Chicago. We do um, residential <coughs> projects all over the country. Uh, and this is, um, we are the owners of the property. We purchased it in January of this year from AMF, the bowling company. Our architect is Vocon. They're a national architect based out of Cleveland, Ohio. But we've worked with them in numerous other cities and just a great designer and great architect. And the civil engineer, which has been actively involved in a lot of the issues on this site, is Kim Lee Horn. I'll go ahead. The, the property we have is, is the 105 acres, <clears throat> uh, the Lincoln Country Club, and the old uh, bowling alley that was closed last year. And uh, we purchased the entire property. And our original proposal uh, last summer, while we were trying to navigate the um, process that was here, was to submit this as a mixed PUD. Um, but after working with city staff and, and going through a couple of site review committee meetings, uh, the decision uh, was, or we were asked to break this into three different zones. Um, since the, the building plan includes a single family portion on the north, uh, low rise multifamily in the center and commercial on Lake Michigan Avenue, um, we proceeded to break that in and re-engineer the plans to break it into three separate parcels. Uh, which is what we have uh, submitted tonight. Go ahead and go, let's go to the next one. So the you can see from the color graphics here is the um, light orange color is represents what would be a 90 foot front lot single family. I believe there's 67 lots up there. Uh, the center portion, which includes a lot of the existing low lying wet areas and future detention facilities, uh, is shown in the green. And the commercial is in the uh, purple or blue on the bottom of the site. Uh, what is, let's go to that, see if we got the site plan on the next one. Okay, this kind of gives you an overlay of what the site plan is. Uh, that is, gives you a little bit more definition on the buildings, as well as some of the stormwater issues that we're, we've dealt with on this property. And I appreciate the comments of the public and, and the city engineering staff and working with Kent County. Um, you know, this site has had some over time. Uh, eroding of the quality of how they process water and put water back out. Uh, the county drain that runs along Lake Michigan and goes around the Schuster's property is old, um, deep, and needs to be replaced. 
Uh, it's part of the problem is that it doesn't move the water properly out of the area. So as we design this property and as we work with the engineering uh, groups, we, um, we were proposing and I think we're required to is that all of the storm water that will land on the 105 acres is controlled within those 105 acres and finds its way through the stormwater system down to the county drain, which is uh, just down right about where the proposed Lincoln Lawns realignment to, uh, to the east is located. And as well, we're gonna be replacing the pipe that goes all the way from the lower right-hand portion of the site across down Lake Michigan back to that county drain. So I know some of the comments have been about, you know, some of the flooding that's happened in the area. The site does have uh, somewhere around 20 to 25 foot of terrain differential as you go across it. The north half, um, which is the single, or the north third, which is the single family, is pretty much the high point where the, the line is between the single family and the multifamily is the high point of the site. So water that would go to the north will be controlled in the stormwater system that will dump out to the west right along the bike trail right now where there's that par three and a couple of the holes back tucked into the corner. And that'll be, we'll create a detention pond over in that area, which will then filter and, and discharge, discharge the stormwater into the creek that runs along or the ditch that runs along the bike trail. Um, the multifamily, uh, the majority of that water goes down to the right into what we're proposing to be 15 acres of open space. On a, uh, other than the stormwater detention ponds we have to build. Uh, and then the, uh, some of the single or some of the multifamily and the majority of the commercial will flow to the west to those two ponds that we're proposing on the west side of the site. So I believe that uh, from an engineering standpoint, if you look at how the grades work and how we're managing the stormwater, even the stormwater from the edges of the properties will come onto the property and flow within the system and go to the county drain. It won't be shed to properties on the outside of the property. Um, one of the other comments that we've had and we've talked about is the, is the traffic impact. Uh, the, during the plan commission meeting, uh, um, a comment was made that kind of added up all the parking spots and multiplied by five and said that there's 3000 cars a day on this property. That's, that's not how the traffic engineering works. Traffic engineering works at peak hour. You know, what the, what's the number of cars that they expect to be inbound and outbound at the peak hour, which is generally at lunchtime or either leaving for work or coming home from work. And the, the total traffic that we have, the, the, the peak hour from the traffic study, which is about a thousand page document, unfortunately, is that we'll be about 75 cars per hour on the peak hour out of the traffic light on the, where the new spine road would go into Lake Michigan Avenue. And I think that's a, that's a pretty notable fact to point out against the total number of parking spaces on the entire property and assuming that every one of those cars moves five times a day on and off the property. So that um, study was done by Kimley Horn. Um, it has been reviewed uh, by MDOT. It's been reviewed by the city. Uh, it's, a, it's a long report, it's got a lot of details in there, but I believe that the conclusion and after we had discussed this on where we would locate the Spine Road and how we would make this connection is that the, the best location for the proposed traffic light, which this project would warrant once it's fully built out or towards a um, full build out, should be located on Lake Michigan at the new Spine Road uh, down there on the right-hand side. It's also, excuse me, that location is halfway in between the two stoplights to the east and the west. And one of the considerations that MDOT had looked at was that if we had moved that light to the Lincoln Lawns relocated um, location, that that would be too close to the Kinney light. That the, the, the traffic patterns and coming over the hill and the stopping patterns would be adversely affected. They would not support having that light on the west side of the property versus in the center of the property. Plus, given the fact that eventually, you know, it might not be in all of our lifetimes, but if the apple orchards ever develop, um, then that's an obvious point for them to exit and to have that intersection work as a full four-way intersection. You couldn't do that over to the west uh, where it connects in. So I think those are the two primary things we had. Um, we had submitted a pretty complete site plan package, uh, which was tabled, which is uh, we had agreed with the city was uh, staff was the proper thing to do because there's a lot of issues within that. Um, I believe we've had five or six site review meetings already with staff and responded to that. 
We had the neighborhood meeting uh, several months ago and heard a lot of comments and responded to that. Um, to that end, one of the things that we um, took upon ourselves to propose after hearing the comments and hearing the, the different traffic concerns is that the misalignment of Lincoln Lawns um, in Sunset Hills to the south is that it just, those are opposing left-hand movements. If someone's turning left to go east on Lake Michigan from the southbound motion or going the other way, you're kind of turning into each other and creates a difficult, and also people are coming flying over that hill at a 50 or 60 miles an hour. It's a, it's a relatively um, dangerous intersection, at least from the engineering standpoint. So what we had suggested um, in consultation with the engineer and MDOT was to realign Lincoln Lawn so that it would then tie up and you'd create a four-way interchange there, which is better for public safety, I think is better for the traffic moments. And uh, when we did that, we created what would be kind of a signature pond that would be at the entrance of the Lincoln Lawns neighborhood. So it, it gives a good presence to the uh, Lincoln Lawns neighborhood. There's still some debate about the roundabout. Um, you know, that's some people like to do roundabouts. Some people don't like to do roundabouts. Um, we're kind of agnostic as to whether there's a roundabout there or a four-way interchange. What we did do is we brought it in right to where the entrance to the park is so that you could have a traffic flow that worked and didn't um, object to driveways or have traffic coming in off of Lake Michigan Avenue. And I think it enhances that. And part of our proposal was that if the neighborhood wanted to have some kind of signage or um, entry monument there at that new road that we'd be happy to uh, work that into the plans to give the recognition to the Lincoln Lawns neighborhood. Uh, the, one of the other issues that's been brought up um, and we discussed at length is the connection and the single family to the north um, to Marlboro and Lincoln Lawns where it goes around the corner there and whether or not there would be a connection north on um, up to Maple Road. And it was the, it was kind of a joint agreement that this is the plan that we would present. Uh, number one, uh, city and fire uh, was not adamant, but they were asked that it's always good to have two entrances to a neighborhood in case something happens, if there's an event and they can't get in that they need to get their equipment in, they like to have dual access. So that was one of the things that we addressed with that connection to the north. The majority of the traffic will be coming down the spine road to make that movement either left at the traffic light or to go back on the Lake Michigan because we're also gonna have to build diesel and acceleration lanes on Lake Michigan so that you aren't turning right into the traffic. You have a chance to move in. Uh, we do have uh, full utility plans that we've designed. Uh, we've, Grand Rapids has approved the, the flow that's available for sanitary as well as water for the site on this. And I think one of the other uh, comments just that I wanna bring up is that in, in this planning process, you know, when we look at what the density is, and I take the commercial out, about approximately 10 acres of commercial, we have 95 acres of land there, and we're proposing 281 units of 95. That's less than three units per acre on an overall density for the site, which is well below the standard of two to four for the RPUD one and four to eight for the RPUD um, uh, two. And I think that's important because the amount of green space that we're giving, the fact that we're going to build a little park area with some walking trails down through the down through that open space in the lower right provides a, um, some public usage and some walking facilities for the neighborhood, as well as people who want to come and walk their dogs or just you know go down through that area once we get it cleaned up. The other thing that we did in working with the city and, and uh, the staff is to develop the connection across the commercial. Um, which would all be public roads. So the connector on the Lincoln Lawns, the commercial road and the spine road, as well as all the roads for the single family would be public roads and they in the right of way. And that would be dedicated and they would be built to city standards um, with the typical profile that you've seen on the newer developments where you have curb and gutter, stormwater, water and sanitary all running down through the street sections. Uh, we've been able to reduce the impact of the connections of where the water and the sanitary are so that it's 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 minimal and the slopes and all the flows are proper. So I think the plan overall um, works very well. It provides a buffer to the north. Um, we've provided a large buffer to the west uh, between on Lincoln lawns. And when you look at how our land is, our land's about eight feet higher than the elevation of Lincoln lawns. But we'll be building a berm in between us and them 
so that any water that comes on that berm will stay within the multifamily portion and the other portion will be captured and run down to the detention basin over there. So I think the, the 100 foot buffer as well as the right of way depth plus the setback line to the buildings is gonna be in, the, in excess of about 180 to 200 feet away from any house uh, that's in the Lincoln Lawns neighborhood now. And we've honored along the north and the east side um, there's a tree line there and the trees kind of come in and go out and there's some good trees and there's some not so good trees along a tree line. But we've uh, we've offered to make that a no cut zone so that none of the single family homeowners when they build their house would get in and and get into that um, foliage area and the trees, uh, as well as the way the site flows coming down will provide a little bit of buffer to the neighborhood that's just to our east, as well as the apartments, but the apartments are kind of higher than us and our, you know, our site comes down and they're sitting up on the hill a little bit more. So I think we've been um, in this in this process, we've been very respectful of all the comments. Um, we've listened to staff, we've listened to MDOT, we've listened to Grand Rapids and the water and sanitary side, and we've accommodated that within our plan. And um, this is not the cheapest way to go, but it's I think it's an effective and positive way to go that will create a great environment um, for the city, as well as for the uh, proposed development that we have here. Um, it is our intent, Stonely Companies, that we will be the, um, we, we own the entire property. It's our intent to sell the land to the north to a single family developer. We've had interest from numerous developers in the area. Um, everybody wants to see if the zoning is there before they commit to move forward uh, with action on this. So we're anxious to, to get the zoning in place so we can take the next steps. It would be our goal from a schedule standpoint to start the road construction as soon as possible. After we get a preliminary site plan approval, we'd submit for permits because we have to build that spine road, which is 2000 feet long. We have to build that um, before we can start building any of the other parcels. And the goal would be to try to get that done this summer um, and not have to deal with winter conditions on building roads. And then once we had the road complete, we would start construction on ours. It's my belief that the single family um, developer that will come in and build the lots there uh, for nice homes um, also is desirous of moving quicker. I believe they'll go with a platting process versus a condo process, but that's their decision that they would make. And then on the commercial, um, we've, we've broken it into five lots, but I think the given that it's a CPUD, there would be flexibility depending on what uses arise uh, for people within the zoning district that could come in and those buildings are somewhat, you know, we've, we've shown what we think is right, but you never know until there's a user comes in and if they want 12,000 feet instead of 10,000, you work within the PUD to, to make those adjustments, but the water, sanitary, storm, electric, cable, all the necessary utilities are planned so that there's about nine point, I think about 9.6 acres of buildable land in the commercial portion along Lake Michigan. So, uh, thank you very much for allowing us to come in front of you. Look forward to any questions that you may have. And, and if we can um, receive a positive vote on the zoning, we would move immediately to go to the preliminary site plan approval process and finalize some of the questions that have come up that the plan commission wanted to address uh, in that process when we go back to them and they take it off the table to consider it. So thank you very much and I look forward to any questions. As we go to, um, um, let's start with commissioner comments here. Um, commissioner Gilbert, I'm going to go to you as a member of the planning commission and uh, the amount of work you've done to this point. So um, uh, I think you probably have the most insight on it as well. So yeah. Um, so uh, as I think everyone should be aware at this point, I was a uh, no vote at the planning commission. Um, I, I think the project has a lot of merit. I think there are a lot of good elements. I think um, specifically the, the realignment of that Lincoln Lawns Drive to match with Sunset Hills is a really good thing for, for the city. Um, I think a lot of the preservation of green spaces was uh, something that I, I really appreciate uh, from the developer. Um, getting the secondary access into that Lincoln neighborhood is a good thing, I think. Um, but I think there are also a lot of things that um, I struggle with. Um, I, I think a residential mix with uh, commercial frontage is ultimately the, the right use here. Um, but where I, I struggle is that um, within specifically the rezoning request, um, I, I don't think it matches what my interpretation of the master plan is. 
um, specifically with respect to the, the layout of the um, middle third of the property, which uh, here is zoned RPUD2 in, in the request. Um, from my perspective in the master plan that we all recently approved, um, we had made a pretty conscious effort. And if you look at the, the master plan map, you'll, you'll see this, um, to buffer the existing neighborhoods, both to the west and to the north with um, a less dense style of development. So you'll see that um, if you look at the master plan map, which I don't think we, we have offhand um, available for the presentation, but um, there's, there's a small, there's a chunk to the right side of the property that doesn't go all the way to the north. That's identified as where we, would, where we had planned to have uh, our, more RPUD2, more uh, high density development. And then the rest of the site to the north of the commercial was expected to be more the two to four lower density residential. Um, now, I don't, I'm not saying that all of that has to be, but I think my, my intent personally would be to see more, um, maybe if, as we're looking at this map, the two uh, western, the two north south roads to the west of the spine road, um, seeing those even adjusted to the two to four density would would make me feel a lot better to better match our intent as I had voted on the master plan that we all uh, we all worked together to approve here recently. Um, so that's where I struggle with with the rezoning request here is because I don't think that we're quite rezoning to the intent of the master plan that we all recently approved. Um, I have a lot of other comments <laughs> too, um, and these aren't these aren't necessarily issues with the rezoning. These are details that we would get into later in the process. And I think, I think we can get to the rezoning part if we, if we see the changes that um, specifically I had, I had mentioned with respect to the plan. Um, but some of the other things that I want to just make mention of, because I've at the planning commission, we heard a lot from the residents and it's, these are just things that later in the process would have to be addressed. Um, Specifically, the uh, the primary residents are in drainage, as our, our developer had said. He uh, he would have to address those issues at the final area site plan review. So that's something that we want. We require that all of the water produced on the site would have to be held there, um, and that we cannot have any type of significant adverse impact on the neighboring properties. So just to address uh, what I have heard significantly from residents uh, at the planning commission um, with respect to connectivity. Um, there are some things that I would change in the, in the road layout, and that's probably a preliminary site plan review item that we would, we would address at that level. But um, I know specifically for me, uh, I, I really have issue with the uh, customer called the SAC. I would really like to see that connected to Maple Row. Um, and if we could have that segmented off from the rest of the development, so you would have one single family road at the north there. And then instead of connecting that into Lincoln Lawns and also into the rest of the development, that would be um, connected up north on both ends uh, to the existing roads there. Um, and then that second northerly most road would connect into Marlboro to the west, and all of the traffic would flow down to Lake Michigan Drive from there. Does that if, if that makes sense to everyone? I know I'm kind of talking a lot of ambiguous. Uh, figures and not, it makes it hard to, to imagine at times. Um, I don't think we need the through to Leonard if we, if we were to make that connection, just because I think that would improve the overall connectivity better. Um, and then I think that would also solve the problem of having secondary access into Lincoln Lawns without putting Lincoln, the Lincoln Lawns neighborhood in a situation where a lot of the traffic is flowing through there. I don't think there would be any reason for anyone to use the Lincoln Lawns Road versus the Spine Road, and it would just, we would have the second way in without creating a, a significant traffic impact on Lincoln Lawns by any means. Um, so I guess to, to get to the bottom line of it all, uh, for, from my perspective, um, I don't think we're quite meeting the intent of the master plan that we approved. Uh, for me to get to yes, I would just need to see a reconfiguration of the rezoning to better match the master plan in and that, that that west side of the property would need to see some type of lower density development. Um, I could probably even give a little bit on the density within what's left of the, uh, the higher density development here and even go maybe um, to the north 
east corner of what is the the single family i could i could give on that uh being more high density but even but i guess the main focus is having those two directly abutting roads to the neighborhoods as uh as more of a single family or low density uh residential development um that's that's the way that i had intended as we approved the master plan that's that's the discussions that I remember as we were putting that together. And I think that's that's kind of where I land as I look back through what we're what we're voting on now. So um, that's my perspective. I do I, I should say on the other side that um, at the planning commission level, we we did have a really good discussion. And the other the other part of this is the discussions that some of you may recall that we had on gross density. Um, and that's where the developer does does meet the overall site's gross density. Um, that we had kind of set together, set in motion as we um, created our master plan. So that's that's where this this does adhere to that level of um, what the maximum amount of uh, housing you can put into, or I guess the maximum amount of development you can put into this site. Um, so there is there is that, and that's important. But the other side of that equation is making sure that the layout configures correctly. So. Um, that's, that's where I kind of separate and say that I, I really feel that the intention when we approved the plan was to buffer these neighborhoods, um, from the new, new higher density development with some more of that, that lower density. Thank you, Commissioner Gilbert. May as well go left to right here. We'll work our way around. Yeah, I just, I, right well, to left, I first think. I have a question. I just want to clarify. Um, so the request this evening is to rezone. Is that correct? correct. So um, I'm struggling a little bit to understand the difference between, I mean, I, I, what I hear Commissioner Gilbert saying is that he would prefer um, a different type of layout um, with some of the roads and, and things like that, right? Well, what, I, what I'm saying in terms of the rezoning request is that I would prefer the rezoning to capture that the, the west side of the property should be in the RPUD one versus RPUD two. Okay, that's what, um, so can Frank or I'm sorry, yeah, Frank or Daryl, can somebody clarify that? I feel like maybe people at home need to understand a little bit better what we're talking about when we say RPUD1 and RPUD2. Okay, RPUD1 in your zoning ordinance is what we would call low density residential. And then RPUD2 is high density residential. How do you differentiate between those two? If you look at the code, it talks about low density residential, um, typical single family houses, duplexes, maybe up to fourplex. Um, and then the RPUD2 includes all of that, plus the potential for larger buildings. Um, at the end of the day, uh, the difference between the two comes down to the housing type and the number of units. And I think that's about as short of a definition as you've ever heard me say. Thank you. So um, this center section with the apartments, as I understand it, or I just want to clarify, the density there is, and that's the, is that the RPUD2, the green? Right, okay. So, and there are, this is the one where it's on the low end, is that right? Where they're like 2.8? In what could be, what is it, up to six? Is that where I'm? Two to four acres, or excuse me, two to four units per acre. And they're proposing 2.3 units per acre. Is that, am I reading that correctly? Well, here's what I don't want to do tonight from the staff perspective. Um, I don't want to take the place of the planning commission. Um, so if we start getting into uh, the layout and the density and the road connectivity, uh, your, your ordinance pretty specifically calls out that that's all within the purview of the Planning Commission. And I certainly don't want to uh, get in their way. That's what that's their deliberation. And Steve's part of that group. So, right. um, you know, that's what I would say. Um, there are some facts, factual numbers put on the plan that everybody can read. And um, well, yeah, and I guess that's what I'm trying to understand is like, 
I'm trying to draw the line between preliminary or PASP and rezoning. Mm -hmm. So if I just take this with, if I remove all the drawings out of here and just assume it's going to be commercial, RPUD two, and then RPUD one. Mm -hmm. That's really all I need to be thinking about tonight. Is that correct? And, and Jason, maybe if you can go to that slide that just shows the zoning plan, that one right yeah. there. So that's really what we're being asked to do tonight. And that's correct. Okay. Commissioner, sorry. Um, from, I'm looking at the uh, planning, the planning director's report that we got at mm -hmm. the uh, planning commission. Um, and they, uh, Trisha, our planning director, went into pretty good detail there. So for the RPUD2 section, the density is 6.72 units per acre. Um, and then for the RPUD1, which is the northerly most portion where the single family is, the density is 2.83 per acre. Is, right. that, is that helpful? Is that kind yeah, of what well, you're Yeah, for? like I said, I'm just trying to understand. I mean, I, I just am trying to keep the preliminary area site plan separate from this request for reason. Right, right. And I know that we that can, can be dive tough. in and <laughs> like, you know, comment on and, you know, all like how it's designed at a right. later conversation. Right. What we're being asked to do tonight is really just right. is commercial RPUD2 and RPUD1 right. the right mix. And can you tell me again why RPUD2 is not? So RPUD2, and again, as in the in the planning report from planning commission level, mm -hmm. um, you see this green section, the overall density for that part of it is 6.72 units per acre as, as proposed. Um, so my, my point here is that um, along that westerly edge specifically mm -hmm. of the RPUD zone, um, in our master plan, we had planned for a two to four density there. And that's where I'm struggling to, to be able to get myself comfortable with that idea um, just because I believe we put that in place and I am my recollection of those discussions we put that in place specifically to about um, more of an RPUD one zone to the existing neighborhood does that make sense it does yep that helps all right that's all for now Mr. Groders um Yes, um, I have a few things to say, and because I'm not nearly as articulate as my fellow commissioners, I'm going to read because I want to say the right things. Um, so as others have noted, there are conflicting opinions regarding this decision. Um, I attended the, the uh, planning, commission, planning Commission's Zoom meeting, um, listened to all the input from neighbors at that point, uh, listened to the input from tonight, um, I went back and reviewed the uh, citizen planner program that I completed a couple of years ago um, to determine what exactly is my responsibility. Um, and having this, the clarification really does help. Um, as a commissioner, I rely on the recommendations of staff um, as well as other commissions, in this case, the planning commission. Um, which is comprised of individuals with extensive expertise. I want our community to have the confidence as I do in that expertise, the expertise that I do not have. So to disregard their recommendations, I don't think sends the best message. Um, as a community member, I'm aware of the housing shortage in our city. I cringe to see people paying 20, 30 and $40,000 over asking prices for homes. Realtors are burdened with advising buyers, knowing that most listings receive 20 to 50 offers that they have to sort through. The odds of being a successful bidder are slim. The housing shortage is widely recognized. Um, Josh Lunger from the Grand Rapids Chamber recently said, um, and I quote, our members have said that housing supply and affordability is a critical workforce, talent, and quality of life issue in West Michigan. Supporting a healthy housing market and the supply of attainable housing will have a positive impact on community, residents, and job providers across Michigan." End of quote. Um, one thing I think about with this is if we delay this further, um, it is not gonna make these single family homes more affordable. Um, construction costs keep going up. Um, our community has a number of empty nesters like myself, 
I'm at the stage of life looking at my house and wondering why I need five bedrooms because I don't. Um, having, um, having these higher end apartments available would give an option to empty nesters who'd like to make their homes available to another family to enjoy, but yet would like to stay in the neighborhood or within Walker anyways. Um, the reviews that I read on the many developments completed and managed by Stone Lake, um, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, such as Silver Spring in Texas and Lofts at Red Mountain in Colorado, both of which I would be willing to move to tomorrow, but I can't leave Walker, you know, so. Um, they offer a high praise for the quality of the apartments as well as the community created within the department or the development. Uh, Stoney has worked extensively to comply with staff recommendations, as well as listening and making accommodations for neighbors' concerns. The acreage devoted to the park area, green space, um, I believe is very generous. Um, the stormwater and retention concerns have been addressed and will continue to be depressed, addressed as the, uh, the development progresses. Um, I think the 100-foot setback along the west, especially now that I hear with, that it's going to have a berm, um, that seems to me like it provides a good buffer. Um, the developer indicates a willingness to retain as many trees as possible, and um, that's really important to me, especially important, important to me. I, I'm a bit of a tree hugger. So, um, As a commissioner, I represent all of Walker. Um, not just my ward. And then as was noted by um, Mr. Quist earlier, um, employers want to bring businesses into Walker. Those employers need employees. Those employees need housing. Um, I, most people would rather live closer to their job than further away. Um, let's see. I believe Walker needs housing far more than this development proposes. This development makes homes available to both renters and homeowners. Um, and I hope that what goes in along Lake Michigan Drive will cater to those residents who live there as well as the surrounding neighborhoods. So um, I, I'm, I would say I'm leaning in favor of this rezoning, particularly to move it along um, because of the need of housing. And also based on the recommendation of the staff and um, all of the planning commissioners, members um, other than Steve, Commissioner Gilbert. So that is the end. All right, thank you, Commissioner Growers. Mr. Chase. Steve, I have a question just on what you're referring to. So yeah. you're saying you want more of like the RPD1 going like halfway down, like the green section on the west side. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, even I think even if not, not I don't even think it has to go to the spine road, but even if you could get halfway there with um, what would have been on the on the other page that that far west road um, being lined both sides with some single family or something of that nature that that would get, that would be sufficient for me to be able to feel comfortable. Do you think it will create more of like a hindrance on like the single family housing to then be like looking at the apartments or not necessarily looking at like the higher? So you're be? saying for the new, for what would be those single family homes, would, would they, would like, the new single family be burdened in that way? Like, would we be creating more of like, if we went single family housing on like that West side would be creating more like an area where it's like blocked out and not so much around all the single family housing other than to the west because you would just have like i don't know how to say this i think i see what you're saying like so you would have some single family homes that are mixed in yeah just along the edge of those apartments yeah. so they wouldn't be like so the way it's designed now it's like single family homes higher density apartments commercial and it's all separate yeah but with if we put the rpd1 coming down that west side, they would be stranded. Yeah, like, do you think that that creates more issues? Okay, I, Does I that see that make what, sense? I, yeah, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. I, from my perspective, it doesn't. I, I understand what you're getting at. And I, I hear, I think I get the value of what you're trying to get at there. Um, oh, hey, he put it up. Uh, I, I just emailed this to Jason like yeah. three seconds ago. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the master plan, having the two to four density 
um, on that west side of the property. And really it, it looks like it goes to where that spine road is, but I'm not, I don't necessarily need all of that. But for my part, I'm just looking for some abutting to the, to the single family that's already there. Um, to that point, what I would say is that um, I think single family going next to single family, I don't, I don't see an issue with that. Um, I, in the context of the new development, it stands out, but in the context of the existing layout and what would be there, what it would be adjacent to, um, I, I, I think it would be okay um, because again, they're budding uh, single family on one side and you would be buying the home knowing, I guess, where you're, what you're buying into versus this existing neighborhood that um, they're already there. Does that yeah. make sense? Like, I guess I, like my concern is like, if we were to do that, like you would be more like spot zoning that one side because then you wouldn't have that yeah, hundred I, foot. I mean, you could still right. have that hundred foot berm, but rather if you have that hundred foot berm, then you have more of a right. designated so sections I, than having that spot Right, I, I do get down. what you're saying um, with, with the spot zoning, but I, again, I, I think there's enough single family residential surrounding it um, to the west, and then also you'd be connecting to more single family uh, to the north. Um, I I feel comfortable with the layout if with that change, but um, I I understand what you're saying, and there's it's it's justifiable. I I think that there's two fair sides to this. Mm -hmm. I really do. Um, but this I again I stand by it just because again you're you've got a lot of single family residential. You would be kind of beginning that zone there. Um, so would you propose taking out like that hundred foot buffer then? Not trying to get into the weeds too much, but. I think you could in theory. I don't think you have they? to, um, but I, I think you could. I think uh, the developer had mentioned that there's some topography there that might make it more difficult to push the single family further into that. Yep. Um, but I, I don't know, I mean, I, anything's worth discussion in terms of the layout. I just, yeah. from my perspective, trying to capture some of this uh, two to four zone that we were looking for in the master plan on that westerly side is, is what I would be looking for. Okay, thank you for your help. Commissioner Rep. You guys have all uh, great points. Um, I do like the, kind of like uh, uh, Commissioner Groder said, we do need houses and we need housing uh, apartments, et cetera. Um, I'm in agreement too with Commissioner Gilbert with following the master plan. I do think um, there should maybe be more residential there on that west side as well. I still am kind of a little bit concerned, which I think ultimately will be taken care of um, with traffic and drainage and whatnot. I really do think that can be taken care of if it's done properly. And I think that would be um, probably uh, set up next. So um, I do think that we should follow the master plan um, and follow what, what Commissioner Gilbert is saying, not with, without having to get into great detail about everything and rehashing it all, what he had already mentioned. So I like a lot of this. There's just part of that of it that I don't like. Um, and uh, so I would like to see some changes to it um, before I would be comfortable with it at this point. Okay. Um, Commissioners Chase and Glanville, um, we've all shared, I'll come to my comments here in just a second, but just asking for um, your input on your comfort with the rezoning, is it a yes or a no at this point? Because we're gonna have to do a roll call in a minute here. I'm gonna be a no. Okay. Um, I would support rezoning, I think, based on what Commissioner Groder said um, and considering the point that Commissioner Chase made that we would have some of these hanging homes there. I think there's opportunity in the PASP process to shift the zone. I mean, we had talked about clustering and things like that, given that this is not a final site plan, still in the developmental stages. I think we can take advantage of the preliminary site plan process to achieve the same goals of having a little bit less density in that area while maintaining the separation of single family 
multifamily and commercial. So I think it would, there's an opportunity to align with the um, master plan as Commissioner Gilbert mentioned without having to, um, with, and with going with this rezoning request. I think there are other ways we can get through that. Okay. Um, Commissioner DeShane's not here either this evening. Um, so I don't want to speak for her. So um, um, I may know on the rezoning um, and really it is, we just went through a master plan process, the city body did, and we're already changing it. And I just, as, as I look, um, you know, part of it, there's been, there's been a lot of improvements and uh, Mr. Cavanaugh this past year has been an extremely choppy process and it's not how we do business in Walker. Um, and I've borne the brunt of it and uh, um, it's gotten better. Um, you've refined the plans with city staff. I'm still not comfortable with what we've just done with the master plan um, with approving this because I think to that West there, and I do look at those single family homes and they're gonna be looking at these apartment buildings across the way. Um, I don't know how much more, well, even though with the buffers in there, it just seems like we're, we're, we're putting a lot in there that's not conducive to um, going back to the master plan and the vision that we had, this commission had when we just approved it. So um, I'm going to be a no vote on this uh, for the rezoning. Um, I'm not sure from a uh, process standpoint, I'll turn to our managers and our uh, city attorney uh, representation, but uh, um, as it appears right now, we have a 4-2 vote to deny the rezoning. Um, is there any additional steps that we need to take at this point? Thank you, Mayor. Um, at this time, the city attorney's office would ask if the commission is leaning toward the denial, that they take a vote on a preliminary denial subject to final approval of the finding of fact to be prepared by staff consistent with the comments given by the commissioner. So we can come back with a written document putting everything together for the final vote. Okay. So would you like, uh, yes, Mr. Cavanaugh? Can I make one? You, you're most welcome to. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. Didn't want to go out of order. Um, just a couple of points. And I, I uh, Commissioner Gilbert and I had talked about this after last meeting. If you could bring back up to the master plan. Let me just point out a couple of things that we dealt with early and how we solved for what this is. But when the master plan was done, the majority of the land that was designated for RPUD2 is in a floodplain. It's unbuildable, would never be buildable. There's nothing you can do to dig out that soil and ever build a building in that area. On the lower right hand side, there's only about the top 30% of that orange piece that's buildable. Um, and if you on the west side, if, if you did do single family off of Lincoln Lawns or provided that within the development, you right now from the back of our apartment building, which if, if you looked at the product or looked at the report, it's a one story building. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's lower than most of the houses in Lincoln Lawns. So you're not, it, it's not the three story buildings that we see down Wilson Avenue and in other areas. These are one story, small four unit buildings, about, eight, uh, about 4, 000 to 5,000 square feet less than some McMansions that are built at certain times. But if you did put single family to the West, which was one of the original discussions, um, you now bring single family uses right up against the multifamily use. So instead of having a 200 foot buffer to the house and having traffic that would then, and when we talked originally with staff about this and reviewed it, and this again, was just talking about it, is they would want that single family on Lincoln Lawns. Well, then now you have access and curb cuts to Lincoln Lawns and you move the property line effectively for the single family multifamily buffer further to the east. But now the new single family and the multifamily are much closer together than the buffer that we created with the 100 feet. And when you look at the topography of the site and see how it lays, unless we wanna just scrape the whole site and move all the dirt, if we honor the topography that's there, it creates some really natural lines of where this should be. And one of the other uh, comments, just to clarify, and, and again, this is just an interpretation issue, but the planning director's report says 6.27 units to the acre, but that takes out all of the open space that we're providing. So we're providing 25 acres of open space on a 40 acre residential parcel. So it's really almost 60 acres for the apartments at 214 units, that's less than four to the acre. If you take, if you sum up this area in the green that we're asking for here, the density is not four to eight, the density is less than four. 
on that green parcel. And the density in the single family is about two and a half to one, not four, which is the two to four. Effectively, you can't get to four units per acre on single family because of the 90 foot front lot requirement that city has, unless you allowed for smaller lots and more compact lots, which is something that as we've talked to everybody, they said, don't go there. You know, that's not when even the single family builders would like smaller lots, but we can't do that. So that density up there is two and a half when you include all its land and the density on the green parcel is less than four to the acre. So if you say, I'm only gonna take the buildable portion of your site, not the entire site that's zoned for that, you come up with a higher number of 6.27. But overall, the property is less than three units to the acre. And I think as we looked at that and the master plan, which you know has the traffic and has some of the connections going through there, but it also brings roads out that kind of ignore the existing property owner and where the wetlands are. You could never bring a road out to Lake Michigan where it's shown on the right-hand side because that goes right through the lowest part of the property. And so when we did that and we said, well, if you're going to have the traffic going and you provide a traffic light and you provide the deceleration zones and we worked with MDOT, that naturally put the road coming up right along the lowlands, along the wetlands. So to the right, you'll have lakes and trees and grasses. And then to the left becomes the residential once you get back into the site behind the commercial. So I think if you, if you take that as a whole, um, instead of just picking out you know, certain facts and look and say, what is the overall density we're doing? It does honor, in fact, there would be 420 units allowed on the site under the, under, the master, under the density that's shown in the master plan, we're doing 281. So we're doing 60% of the zoning that would be, or of the density that would be allowable under the site, which I think other than the lines drawn here, which again, were done you know, in, in a very, I'm sure, straightforward required manner, didn't take into effect the topography or the fact that you've got approximately 20 acres of wetlands down in that lower right-hand corner. So I would ask that that be considered as part of this. If, if it has to be developed exactly as the wetlands you're gonna have, or as shown on the master plan, you're gonna be creating conflicts within the site instead of buffering everything outside the site and keeping that within itself. And the fact that, you know, we're doing a one story product, which is lower than most of the houses around there. And when you have the berm in there, the houses won't even see the apartment buildings with the berm that we'll be using in there. So I'd like you to take that into consideration as far as the process. If we have, if we have to go back and, and go through this process, I just time having worked now on this for about a year and four months, is that means that we probably wouldn't be back in front of you until later this summer. So the road's not gonna be built this year and the single family and the multifamily won't start till next year. Well, economic conditions next year are gonna be different than they are this year. As someone pointed out, the construction costs, they've gone up 30% since January 1st of last year. We still can do it, but if we wait another year or two, if lumber goes from 1,200 to 1,600 or $2,000 a thousand board feet, all of a sudden you're not gonna be able to build homes that are affordable or attainable. And so I think the balance of the housing and, and I think what has been careful and very thoughtful site planning and working with staff on how we came up to this solution, we didn't ignore what was there, but what was there couldn't be ignored in that process. And I think that was, you know, we worked long and hard to get this to be right and to provide a product that's gonna be a beautiful product. Um, thank you for your compliments, but you know, I've been doing this for 40 years all over the country. And I'm really excited about this because I think this is the new stage and this is the new era of what we want to be building going forward, not the higher density, taller, you know, kind of compact sites that you've typically seen for apartments. So I just ask for that for consideration of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, and one of the points that I probably should end there is Commissioner Growers had read the uh, um, some of the messaging from uh, the Grand Rapids Chamber and so forth. I'm so acknowledging there is a ridiculous need for starter homes. And um, um, I think sometimes affordable housing can be uh, misconstrued in a number of ways. Uh, people don't necessarily understand it. it's true definition, but uh, we have a need for it. But I'll come back to the rezoning of this is the impact of what we just went through in approving the master plan. This is not what I envision in approving the master plan for this piece of land. So um, what I'm going to uh, do probably for clarity, counselor, can I have you read that back one more time here? And then I, I will do a roll call of the commission. 
Um, so we have that for the record, but I would like to have your comments um, just to make sure. Maybe if I could ask you to the microphone. Um, so we have that. Um, uh, yep. And then basically, too, as we go to do this, the, the, the key is what's being asked of us on this ordinance on 21 517. This is a first reading to amend the zoning ordinance. If you're in favor of the rezoning, um, then you're making that motion and support. If you are not in favor of the rezoning, um, you will be a no vote after counselor is done reading. So for, so for those, if the commission's inclined to deny the rezoning, we'd ask that the motion be a preliminary denial subject to final denial after the and instruct the staff to put together a um, an outline based off the comments here today. So let me restate that a little bit better. Preliminary denial subject to review of a finding of fact compiled by staff at a later date. Okay. So are we good commissioners for those voting no? Um, I'll entertain a motion for that as you just stated at counselor. Okay. The, the denial. The uh, denial. Yep. Motion. Yeah, I, I can make the motion. I'll motion. support it. Gilbert, support from Commissioner Rapp. Um, all those for the denial of the rezoning, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, the rezoning is denied. So thank you. And uh, we'll work on this um, after, uh, after night. Okay. Yes. Yes. Rezoning is Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Moving on the agenda, um, Jason Rotman, do we have any other public comment out on uh, our, I see number of participants out there. Um, so I'll open this up if there's any other public comment out there, whether it's on the agenda or not. Um, you can hit star nine, raise your hand, or you can wave your hand in front of the camera and uh, we will uh, unmute you and make you live. All right, I'll go one more time. Uh, any other public comment um, out there in the Zoom land? Star nine or raise your hand in front of the camera. To clarify, hit the virtual hand. All right, seeing no further public comment, uh, nothing in the room. All right. Joey, you can talk. You're muted. Mr. Orfers, if you can hear us, you're actually on mute right now, but your hand is up. There you go. Hello, this is Julia Orfus, Joey's wife. I live at 683 Westway Drive Northwest. So I am, or we are in the very back Northwest corner of the Lincoln Lawns subdivision and have been here 39 years. I want to thank everyone for being open and honest and letting your knowledge and possibly, probably your heart and your mind determine what this property is going to be used as. We have had a lot of construction behind us with the new power lines going in. And now we are going to have a lot of construction next to us. And I understand that things need to progress and that there needs to be housing. I'm just asking that you think long and hard what is the best decision to be made for the city of Walker and for our little downtown of Standale. Many of us in this subdivision 
have raised our children here. Many people's children have purchased the homes from their parents. And now we are seeing a whole recycling of little children again in our neighborhood. We do not have sidewalks in our neighborhood. And we know that we are able to walk in our neighborhood and see wildlife from our neighborhood and work with the golfers when there were golfers on the golf course as our side yard is the golf course. And I'm, I'm just asking, and, and maybe I'm just saying this for the whole subdivision, I hope, that I just want this to be a really informed decision for what is best, maybe not even for us, but for the generations that come after us. Thank you for your time. Thank you all for your persistence in voting yes or no on the rezoning or how this is gonna work. Um, I just appreciate you letting me talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Sorfus. Um, uh, Jason, anybody else out there? Okay, Linda. Hello. My name is Linda Lanou Scott and I live at 558 Westway. And I just wanted to clarify some people in the neighborhood might not realize that if that change happened that was just stated, that would add more traffic because you'd have a whole new, across the street from everybody would be a whole new set of houses, residential houses, and then that berm would be gone. So then you're just adding a whole bunch of houses to this neighborhood, and there's still gonna be the other neighborhood on the other side instead of the way it was originally proposed, there was gonna be a big berm there and the traffic and all the houses would have been in the other neighborhood. And I just don't know if that's clear to everybody. And that's all I gotta say. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, we had one more with their hand up. Okay. All right, one last time, public comment. Anything on our agenda item or otherwise? Mr. Scalis, go right ahead, please. Click the red light, still on there. There it is, thank you. Yep. Frank Scalis, uh, 695 Lincoln Lawns. I heard all the information this evening and I can appreciate the developer's point of view. However, we need to take an effect the fact that it doesn't follow the master plan. We all know that the water has been there for uh, 30 years that I've lived there and nothing has really changed with the wetlands. Um, as far as our neighborhood goes, when you look across from our house, from the golf or from the golf course to our house, um, our neighbor next door is probably the only two story house on our side that I can think of. And I've been there 30 years. I don't know of any other two-story house. Um, ours is all single story from the front. So that argument sort of goes away. Um, I want to reiterate the drainage problems. Um, I, this is a zoning um, approval or disapproval. I don't understand a preliminary, when we're all here, the developers here, the commission's here, everyone's here, the attorney's here, the city management's here. Why are we dragging this out? I, I don't know. Why is there a preliminary? What's gonna go on behind? But I, I, don't, I don't get it. 
Frank, they're, they're basically, it's a summary of the findings of fact that we all stated up here that have to be a part of that denial. So it has to be done in a written form. The votes have been taken. Um, and then we'll, that's going to be summarized into a legal document. Um, who's, so who's, who, who demands that, that it has to be written? Um, state of Michigan. It is? Yeah. It says, it, it's it, so it's nothing that you can do no. here at the city commission and just say denied. We, we have just done that preliminary, but we have to provide a written summary. And this is probably from- And a, then can that be changed? No, we're providing a legal summary unless it's council, unless there's something I don't know there. I don't think we can. The objective of providing or creating this finding of fact is to distill the comments and put them in a way that creates a, a solid record. So that should someone take umbrage with the fact that we're denying the request and we end up in court, we can say, here is the reasonable basis that the city used in order to deny that request. Because if we just rely on the sporadic comments by the commissioners as reflected in, you know, what I'm sure are fantastic minutes, it can be hard for us to use that to convince the judge that our position is appropriate. So it's really just, again, building a record for the future, should there be problems. I concur. Documentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, Commissioner City Manager comments, anything else for the good of the order? Managers to the left, Mr. Rapp, Chase, Broders, Glenville, Gilbert, Madam Clerk. All right, we'll entertain a motion for adjournment then. I'll, I'll support it. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you.